Hi there, I'm Blaise Hope at the World Economic Forum on East Asia here in Jakarta. And with me is John Riadi, Executive Director of the Lippo Group and Co-Chair of this year's forum. John, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So the WEF on East Asia here in Jakarta, what does that mean? Well, I think uh, the hosting of Indonesia of this meeting says a lot about Indonesia and its relevance uh, on many of the global issues and challenges that we're discussing uh, at these meetings, whether it's economically, politically, environmentally, on food security, terrorism, democracy. On all these issues, Indonesia has a lot to contribute, a lot of lessons learned, and a lot of hopes to provide the rest of the world. But I think the fact that it's in Indonesia says a lot also about the region. This is the East Asia meeting of the World Economic Forum. But over the last six years, it's always been held in an ASEAN country. So as much as, it, as it's an East Asia meeting, it is also a meeting, I, I believe, about ASEAN. So I think this, is, this, this, this meeting in Indonesia says a lot about uh, the forum's uh, confidence on the region and what we can achieve. What's been dominating discussion over the past uh, two and a half days? Uh, economically, we've been talking a lot about uh, a lot of the volatility uh, around the global economy. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the slowdown of China, uh, about the impending uh, Fed uh, rate rises yeah. uh, coming up soon. Uh, we've been talking also politically about the geopolitical challenges in Russia. Uh, we've talked a lot about the technological changes and what, that, what impact that has on the economy and also health. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot also about trust, uh, which is the central uh, theme uh, of this topic, uh, about how we can rebuild trust in our society and in, in our region uh, and also in our institutions. Well, how can we? Well, the, the challenge with trust is that we're living in a very fast-changing world in all the ways that I mentioned just now. But while the region and our world has changed immensely over the last 30 to 40 years, our institutions have not changed with it. So currently our institutions don't quite reflect uh, the realities of the world. And therefore they don't have the credibility and the trust of the constituents. So I think the key to restoring trust is a renewed sense of stewardship. Uh, whether it is stewardship of governments in the mandate that they've been given by their constituents, whether it's stewardship by businesses over the many resources that they've been given to manage, whether it's uh, stewardship over the educational institutions of our world, over media, uh, and many of the other institutions that our society has. Do you think the uh, new government of President Joko Widodo, relatively new now, uh, has been effective at starting to implement bureaucratic reform to update the institutions? Well, it's only been five months. Uh, okay. But uh, bureaucracy reform is one of the main pillars that he ran his camp campaign on. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard him speak yesterday. He gave a great speech. It was very well received by the foreign community, uh, by many of our guests here. Mm -hmm. And I think in his own way, slowly, he is trying to chip away at the bureaucratic uh, uh, mess of our mm -hmm. country. Well, what do you think are the most crucial uh, issues to address? or institutions that need to be reformed? I think across sectors. I think on a very uh, global, macro, geopolitical level, we've got institutions that were, many of them were created in the 1940s and 50s and 60s, including the World Bank, the IMF, the UN. I think those institutions must be reformed. Uh, and I think slowly we'll begin to create our own new institutions to supplement uh, that system. For example, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank that China has been promoting. Uh, that will slowly shift uh, the, the balance of power uh, and add you know, different bodies. Uh, the BRIC Bank is another one. So that's on a global geopolitical level. But I think uh, for each country, each national government must also reform uh, its own state. Uh, we see that I think there, are un there is an unprecedented level of uh, distrust uh, with governments. So I think governments have to show that they can be responsive, that they can meet the needs of their citizens. Also the institution of business and markets. I think especially post the subprime crisis, uh, many people have lost trust and faith in business and markets and their ability to create wealth and to allocate opportunity fairly. So again, I think businesses must uh, be proactive to, addressing the, to address some of these concerns. One last example on education. I think many people today no longer trust the institution of education and their ability to train uh, a, a workforce to be productive and to train people with the right skills to be productive uh, once they get into the workforce. So again, you know, I think we need to think about uh, education. How can, we, uh, how can we reform our system uh, to better prepare our, our, the workforce of the country to be productive and to, have, to live meaningful lives? How can uh, big companies that's, uh, uh, address yeah. um, the concerns, the trust of the public? Well, big companies have a big role to play. 
and especially in markets like Indonesia and in emerging markets like ASEAN, uh, I think big markets uh, have a big role to play in partnering with the government in allowing uh, the society to meet the needs of its people, whether it's healthcare, education, uh, across all sectors. Part of the uh, discussion here, uh, Bain gave a presentation about their research um, into the performance of conglomerates in Southeast Asia. Uh, and um, would you say that that's been an, uh, an overriding theme of the discussions? One of the them. Forum? I mean, I think the um, uh, Southeast Asian businesses, Asian businesses have been, dominant by, uh, have been dominated by family business, uh, that family businesses. And it's always been a question about how family business, businesses can uh, continue to ensure sustainability, are able to evolve, are able to stay agile, are able to take opportunities, and I think are able, how they're able to become uh, productive you know, citizens and stakeholder, stakeholders of our society. Uh, so yes, this has been a big issue and I think Bain has come up with a very uh, important uh, report. So would you say, uh, would you agree that a model of family business is something good for uh, Indonesians that are just getting involved in setting up their own businesses, the smaller end of the scale? Do you think that's a model that they should emulate? Well, I think, you know, we've got SOEs, we've got family businesses, we've got professionally run corporations, right? We've got cooperatives, right? I think the legal structure is secondary. I think prime, the, the, the more important, the more essential point is about entrepreneurship. Uh, the country needs entrepreneurships. Uh, whether that comes from small businesses, whether that comes from larger corporations, uh, we need entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship leads to innovation and innovation leads to economic growth. Okay, great. Well, we'll take a break right now. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute with John Riadi.